Hey, welcome back to the Let's Ditch Misophonia channel. In today's video, yes, what we're talking about can absolutely be applied to misophonia. And also what we'll talk about today can be really helpful in any area of your life. I obviously this channel focuses on misophonia. And as a coach, I primarily support people in the misophonia community. And also the modalities and the techniques and the strategies that I use with clients, they can help you improve any area of your life. And so you'll notice that this channel will start to expand a bit to topics and strategies and modalities that can help you kind of think outside of misophonia specifically. So in today's video, this was actually inspired by a conversation that I had with a client recently and when they hopped on the call, they initially came in with this hope that they would be able to kind of erase certain memories or just be able to eliminate them from their mind because they perceived the awareness of those memories as causing a problem. And so I shared with them that we as human beings, we don't really choose our thoughts. We don't choose what's coming up into our mind. It just kind of happens. It appears. It's there. For example, if you maybe there's a particular smell and when you smell that smell, it like brings you back to like it brings to your mind a specific memory. When you smelled that thing, you didn't then decide, ooh, I want to think about this memory. It just happened. Or maybe there's a particular taste or, you know, whatever it might be. Or when you're asleep at night, you're like, I am going to dream about this thing. Like it just happens. So if you have a thought of like, oh, this person looks really stupid in that outfit, that thought doesn't make you a bad person. That thought is there. You didn't choose to think that thought. It just happened. It just came into your mind. What we can do, though, is we can decide what to do with that thought. And this is not the kind of thinking that we have been trained to do. We've been trained to see the world in a very moralistic way in terms of good or bad, true or false, right or wrong. You have to be good if you want the promotion. And if you're bad, then you're not going to get the things you want in life. Or if you have money, then you must be a bad person. We're, that's kind of how we are raised to see the world. The majority of us, that's kind of how we're taught to things. And so a lot of times we feel shame or we feel embarrassment or we feel frustration when we have certain memories or when we have certain thoughts. So for example, if you experience misophonia, maybe your child makes a particular noise that's really annoying and a thought pops up in your head of, oh my gosh, they're so annoying. And then you're like, well, how could I think that about my own child? Like I must be a bad parent. But you didn't choose to think that your child was super annoying. This thought just popped up into your head. But you then get to decide what you wanna do with that thought. And again, this isn't typically how we're trained to think. So normally what happens is we just automatically go through this spiral, right? Child makes a noise. You're like, oh my gosh, they're disgusting. Well, now I feel bad and I must be a bad mom or a bad dad or a bad parent, whatever it is, right? It takes practice to shift the way that we view things, the way that we think about things, because again, it's new. It, it can seem kind of weird to start to observe your thoughts because we're not taught to do it. <laughs> we are judged based on our thoughts and our actions, but we aren't actually taught how to navigate our thoughts and emotions. So if a memory pops up in your head, having that memory doesn't mean that you have to then relive it. So typically what happens with a traumatizing or painful experience when we think about it, even though it's not happening right now because you're watching this video, our mind is reading that memory as if it's happening in this moment and it's almost like you're transported back in time and you're experiencing it all over again. Because that is how we're kind of taught to experience the world. What we can do though, is we can start to observe the thoughts that we have. So if you wanna change your world, change your thoughts. And it's really difficult to change your thoughts if you don't even know what they are. So the first step is simply just becoming aware of the thoughts that you have and releasing that judgment. Because again, you aren't choosing those thoughts. If I tell you right now, don't think of a blue flamingo, 
you just thought of a blue, flam a blue flamingo. We as human beings are not very good at not thinking of things, but again, we can decide what to do with those things with some practice. So let's say that a particular memory comes up for you. Maybe it's a memory of a loved one making a noise that really triggered you. What might happen is you start to fall into that thought spiral of they shouldn't have done that. That was super annoying. I'm a bad person because this doesn't bother anyone else. You get to say, you know, wait a minute. These thoughts, this memory, this isn't serving me. Like this isn't happening. It doesn't exist. It's already over. I conquered it. It's done. This isn't worth my time. And you can literally dismiss it. And I've talked about using that strategy in another video, like slamming the door shut on those thoughts because your mind generates emotions and thoughts to generate some kind of action. So if your mind is telling you over and over again, that sound is annoying, make it stop, make it stop, make it stop. Your mind is going to keep sending that signal again and again and again until you either act on it, leave the room, tell the person to stop, or until you tell your mind to shut the F up. Like I said, you aren't choosing those thoughts. As someone who experiences misophonia, you're not deciding to be annoyed or frustrated by particular noises. It's just happening. You can though then decide if you want to act on those thoughts. You get to decide what you want to do with them. Some memories, like maybe you have, um, you know, maybe a loved one who's passed away. Sometimes a memory will come up for you and it is something that you want to spend time with. It's something that you want to experience because there's so many good feelings and memories and emotions attached to that particular experience. So if that comes to mind, you might allow yourself, you know, 10 minutes to really relive it and be there in that moment. And that's incredible. And also if there's something traumatizing that comes up for you, it's probably not very useful for you to sit there and relive it. And so you can let your mind know, hey, this isn't actually happening. This thing doesn't exist. This isn't something that we need to focus on. It's the difference between, imagine that these memories are kind of floating in front of you. It's the difference between taking that memory and acting on it or putting that memory on the cloud in front of you and kind of letting it drift out of, out of your view, right? And just kind of letting it move on. Now, again, if you've experienced something really traumatic, you might be like, okay, Brooklyn, it's not that easy. When these memories come up for me, it's like the suffering is happening so quickly. Like it's automatic. I'm not choosing to, to, you know, relive the moment. It's just happening again. It takes some practice and it, it will likely feel weird or even uncomfortable at first. It might feel difficult because it's not what you were raised or trained or kind of taught to do. So, you know, me as a person, as a human being, four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, I thought about the world and I even thought about my own mind and my own experiences very differently than I do right now. So yes, this way of thinking, it takes practice, but it's not going to be challenging or awkward or weird forever. Eventually it becomes second nature. So I still experience a lot of challenges. I experience sadness, anger, jealous, jealousy, frustration, despair, grief. I still experience all of these emotions and I have really tough experiences in my life, but the way that I approach those things is very different. Rather than just allowing things to happen to me, I get to be an active participant in my life. I get to decide what is going to be useful for me to act on and what isn't. And it's not that every single thought that comes in my mind, I then have to decide, okay, is this useful? Yes. Okay. I'm going to act on it or no, I'm going to slam the door shut. I don't have to do that anymore because I've installed this way of thinking. It's become the new normal. So again, this takes practice. This takes commitment but it's not impossible. It's just a different way of working with your mind and kind of taking control of your life in a way that we aren't particularly used to. And also, it's also okay to fall into old patterns and beliefs and habits sometimes. Like there are some days where I find myself laying in bed until 11 a.m. and I wanted to get up at nine, but I just kind of was on my phone or I slept in or I was playing a game, right? That's okay. We're human beings. We're not going to be perfect or make the best decision all the time. That's part of being a human being and living our lives is we have these experiences and we're all just doing the best that we can.
but also you don't have to take a back seat for your entire life. You have the ability to shift your thinking to live happier, healthier, and to be able to do more of the things that you love. It can also be really useful to have someone who is there to support you in doing this. I didn't shift my my thinking process or my way of approaching the world overnight. I had coaches, I had training, I had a lot of, you know, I invested a lot of time and money and effort and I had people who were there to support me and I still have people who are there to support me. Because when you're in the quicksand, when you're sinking, the last thing you want is for someone to jump in the quicksand with you. Now you're both screwed. Now you're both going to die. Instead, if someone else comes along, you want them to throw you a rope and pull you out. That way you're both safe. If they jump in the quicksand with you, you're both screwed. So if someone walks by, you don't want them in the shit with you. You want them pulling you out. So having someone who can kind of see what you're going through and someone from the outside looking in, it can be really helpful because they can shine a light on some of kind of those blind spots. Because if you don't even know what you're thinking or feeling or experiencing, it's gonna be really difficult to change it or really difficult to shift it if you don't even know what it is. So having someone be able to just sit there and listen to you and kind of articulate what it is that you're experiencing, having someone help you kind of, just kind of shift the way that you're viewing things, help shift your perspective can be so, so helpful. And as a coach, that is what I do. So whether it's shifting the way that you experience misophonia, whether it's helping you in some area of some other area of your life, a lot of what I do as a coach is simply just having conversations with people and using multi-level communication to engage both the unconscious and conscious mind to actually create transformation. I love, I love what I do as a coach. It's just a lot of being able to talk with people and support them and help them see things in a way that's going to be more useful for them. So if you're interested in coaching, of course, primarily what I do is I'm a misophonia rewiring coach. You do not have to experience misophonia to work with me though. If you do experience misophonia, you'll move to the top of the wait list. And also if you're looking for life and success coaching, I'm happy to support you as well. So check out this description of this, or check out the description of this video and you can find the link to apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching. I can only take a few clients per quarter because my schedule does fill up pretty quickly. However, if you fill out the application, you'll get on that wait list and I will reach out to you when there is a spot. So thank you so much for watching to, or watching to, it's late at night. It's like 10 o'clock on a Wednesday when I'm recording this. So <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in to another video on the Let's Ditch Misophonia channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for those who are doing that regularly on my videos. I really, really appreciate your support and I will catch you in the next one.